A squat versus a hinge. Is there one that's better? Is there one that's safer? What muscles do they target? Those are the things that we're gonna talk about today in this video. So the squat and the hinge are two different types of movements. They target different muscles. Our squat is hips go down, butt goes down, chest pretty much stays up. It looks something like this here. Whereas our hinge is hips go back, chest can come forward a little bit, and you might feel heavier on your heels. You actually don't want to fall backwards, but a lot of people, if they're not used to the hinge, when they do it the first few times, they're trying to find their balance and they might find that they fall uh, a little bit backwards. But there's your hinge. And on this one, your chest can come forward a little bit more. So the squat is considered more of a knee dominant exercise because watch the bend in the knee. The knee bends a little bit there. Whereas the hinge is considered more of a hip dominant exercise because the hip comes back. So now I've got more bend in the hip, but the knee doesn't bend quite so much. Now, a little piece of some things that are controversial here. When it comes to the squat, some people say you should still get your, your butt back and go down there and don't let the knees come forward. Uh, there are other people that say, no, it's completely fine for most people if the knees do come forward and if they go over the, uh, uh, the toes just a little bit, they'll say that is completely fine. Now, what does for most people mean? It means people that don't have knee issues, knee problems, arthritis of their knees, because as the, the more the knees go forward, the more pressure there is in the knee. So if you have knee conditions, the hinge, if you want to stay active and stay moving, the hinge is going to be a better option for you. Now, that being said, if you have hip conditions and hip problems, you might find that the uh, squat is a better option for you. Uh, let's talk about what muscles are targeted. When we do more of the squat, which is the hips down and the chest stays up, you're using a lot more of your quad muscles. These are the muscles uh, in the front of your thigh from your knee to your hip up here. When you do the hinge, as your hips go back, we said that's the hip dominant. I'm heavier on my heels. You use more hamstrings. You use more butt or glute muscles, and you're gonna use a lot more of your back in through there. So I've got a weight here. The deadlift is the classic example of a hinge movement. So the deadlift is lifting a dead weight up off of the floor. That's going to be you step up, you engage your core nice and tight, you pull your shoulders back. You want to be very strong in your spine, very lengthened in your spine, meaning you don't want to have be rounded like this here. You can just look at that and say that does not look safe. This is how people get into trouble and they hurt their back with a deadlift. A deadlift is a double-edged sword. If done incorrectly, it's going to be detrimental for your spine. If done correctly, for a lot of people, it can be a great way to rehabilitate your spine because it's a great core stability exercise. So we'll take a look at it. Again, my hips are gonna go back. My chest can come forward just a little bit here. And we grab the weight. I stay neutral in my spine and we come up here. In the classic example for a squat is a squat. So this is going to be our chest is going to stay up and my butt goes down. More of my weight, before I said the weight is on my heels with the uh, hinge or the deadlift, for this one here, for the squat, I want more of an equal distribution of all of the weight throughout my entire foot and chest stays up and my butt goes down and then we come up here. Now, if a deadlift with this setup here is either intimidating for somebody or I don't have that kind of equipment at home, a couple of great options to practice that hinge movement, you can use something like a kettlebell. And here are a couple of options. You would put the kettlebell in between your feet here because the further away a weight is from your body, uh, the more stress that's going to um, happen on your spine. So you wanna come up with that weight in between your feet. Again, the hinge, this is our deadlift, hips back, core's engaged, strong and straight through our spine and our chest can come forward a little bit. And then this would be an example of a deadlift with a kettlebell. For some people, they master that, they get good with, good with that and they want to up it a little bit. Another really popular example of a hinge is a kettlebell swing. So this time, 
I'm going to have the weight here. Now, I know I said don't put the weight too far in front of your body, but when you watch this, you'll see I'm not actually going to lift it up. I'm going to let it come back to my body, and then I'm going to swing it forward with that hinge movement. Notice when I do this, hips will be back and forward, not up and down. This is not how you do a kettlebell swing, which is what you see some people do that have never been taught how to do it properly. So it's going to be spine straight, swing it here, and now I can pop up through my hips. And then again, if you want to do a squat, you could come here. This time, butt's going to go down, my chest stays up. And most people that do these here, they'll hold the weight here in their hands and chest stays up, butt goes down, and we've got that. And that is the difference between a squat and a hinge. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. I'd like to uh, answer that. Uh, like this video, subscribe to our page if you want more information.